Well, hello there. How you doing? Tony Scott here, Smooth RB 105.7 in the studio on this uh, kind of like a confusing day. We had some really bad rain uh, earlier, almost an inch of rain. Uh, by looking at the skies earlier, like it was going to rain like 30 feet, but it only rained like about an inch, a little less than an inch, depending on where you were. Uh, but it's uh, partly sunny right now, but we got more rain coming tomorrow. So there's that here in uh, North Texas. So, But anyway, time to look at some tea. Uh, Tony's Tea, look at some entertainment headlines that uh, grab my attention today, entertainment and otherwise. It will start first with the uh, Entertainment Empire got renewed for the fifth season. So there's that. Uh, now the show is down viewership-wise 31%, which is really a lot. But Fox says, you know what? They're down 31%, but they're still winning their time slot, so let's give them another year. I say, great, let's do it. Let's make it happen, man. Just goes to show sometimes it ain't all about the ratings, I guess. Uh, Camille Cosby had been pretty quiet since uh, Bill Cosby, and even before the, the second trial. But he got convicted last week, three counts of sexual assault. And uh, Camille finally released a statement, a three-page statement, where Mrs. Cosby says the case against Bill was, quote, mob justice, not real justice, and it is a tragedy that must be undone. She wants an investigation into the prosecutor. Now, she is getting some blowback from some people because she's comparing Bill's convictions to uh, Emmett Till. Why are we in a state where we have to compare everything? We, we always compare something. And you really can't compare something unless it's exactly the same. Same charge, same time, same lawyers, same city, same jury. Because otherwise, it, I mean, because there's so many variables that happen, you know. It's like uh, one jury may, may acquit or another jury may convict. It just depends on how it's presented by the prosecutor, right, and how uh, a defendant's lawyer answers those charges so i mean it's kind of hard to compare things but we seem to do that a lot i, I don't know why a woman i, I don't know it, people slide into people's dms direct mentions i guess is what that means on social media and sometimes they shoot their shot well a woman did uh, a college student named sylvia wilson at uh, temple university uh, slid into michael b jordan's dms and it worked they ended up having a smoothie together and take took some pictures together which is pretty cool it doesn't happen that often that people uh, slide into uh, DMs and, and are successful, but in this case, it was. Michael was shooting a movie on the campus of Temple University, and she didn't. She felt it was inappropriate to ask him out for a drink. She asked him out for a smoothie, and it worked. <laughs> wow. I don't have to have that. I don't, I don't have to worry about anybody slipping. The only people who slip into my DMs are people who want something. <laughs> they don't want me. They want something, you know, tickets, things like that. I never. I don't respond to those anyway, so there's that. Damon Wayans wants us to give Kanye West a pass. He says, you know what, I'm not really a fan of Kanye West, but we should give him a pass. Uh, Jamie Foxx criticized TMZ for having Kanye West on their show a couple of days ago, knowing already that he had some issues because Harvey Levin, the show's creator and the owner of the show, whatever you want to call him, he actually uh, said he spent about a week with Kanye West or some days. I think uh, oh, Kanye was on Monday. And I think uh, they had breakfast on Sunday and spent some other time together, too. Maybe he should have known that Kanye wasn't right, but he put him on TV anyway. We did a poll question on our Facebook page. Uh, do you think TMZ was right or wrong for putting Kanye on their show? Most people say they got no problem with it. Kanye's fair game. He's a celebrity. So there's that. Uh, Paula Patton's boyfriend, Zach Quitman's wife, Mia, has filed for divorce. The story broke a few weeks ago that uh, Paula Patton was dating a married man. Now, Paula got ahead of the story right after one well, night. She didn't get ahead of it, but right after, right after it came out, she spoke about it and says, you know what, he's in the process of getting divorced, you know, trying to hammer it out and stuff. But his wife already knew we were dating, right? She said, I told Robin, her ex-husband, Robin Thicke, that I was dating this guy and he's married, but going through a divorce. So there was nobody got caught off guard. So that's, that's what she said ahead of time, whether she was... You know, trying to spin it a certain way or not, I don't know. I don't know, but he's getting divorced, and now let's all move on. But people have been... I was in a in a Facebook Live with Lynn Hayes earlier, and uh, the subject of oh, once a cheater, always a cheater came, came up, and I was not here for that. Because nothing is absolute. Nothing is absolute. Saying once a cheater, always a cheater is not, is not... First of all, it's not true. Now, it may be true in your world, but overall, no, I've known people who've cheated, men and women, who cheated once, and that was it. They felt so bad their conscience got to them uh, that they just vowed never never to do it again. One person never got caught. It just the conscience was too much for them. And the other person did get caught, and they were able to rebuild their marriage. So there's that. So there you go. Uh, News-wise, uh, Twitter 
want you to change your password. Apparently, they stored the, all the Twitter passwords of 330 million users on a server that didn't have the proper encryption. So they're saying, just to be safe, go ahead and change your password, which is like a pain in the butt. I don't even remember what my password was. I know it had, well, I ain't going to tell you what it was, but, but a lot of people do the easy password thing. If you're going to use words, don't just like substitute numbers for letters like zero for O or one for I or L, things like that. Put words together that don't normally go together. You know, like horse nachos, something like that. You know what I'm saying? Because nobody's going to guess that. Come on. Horse nachos? <laughs> Who's going to guess that password, right? But, uh, yeah, if you got Twitter, you should change your password. If, if Twitter's telling you to change your password, you should change your password. So remember that, uh, what was that, that, that here in Plano, that Sambuca 360 restaurant? Remember? We talked about this uh, for a while on Monday. A lot of people were feeling some kind of way about it. The restaurant that told the, uh, the black motivational speaker and his wife that they had to leave. And he was like, why well, I got to leave? And they got some of it on, 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 on video. His wife pulled out her phone and recorded. Remember that we talked about that? Well, the general manager who apparently confronted this uh, man uh, has been suspended. Um, he, uh, let's see, and the restaurant is saying that it wasn't about race. You know, you should have just stuck with, you know what, we did this wrong. Because that's what they said, what was it, uh, Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday, they said, you know what, we got this wrong. And they should have just left that alone. Saying it's not about race is an insult to people because it was clearly about race. It may not have started out about race, but it became about race. And, and the 911 call, you know, the guy, the manager was telling the police, this guy is refusing to pay his tab. And he's, uh, and he's being threatening and he might have a weapon. And so the man says, you know what, I've had so many private parties at this restaurant. I have brought them tens of thousands of dollars of business. And I, and I refuse to pay a $22 tab, you know. So that, that, I think the restaurant, they should have just stuck with, we did it wrong. We handled this wrong. Because saying it's not about race is an insult. I mean, it really is. So uh, I don't know uh, if you know the NRA convention is here uh, beginning tomorrow in Dallas. The president and the vice president are going to be speaking, so will Ted Cruz and a lot of people, I think including myself, to be quite honest, we're like a little, little critical about the NRA banning guns when the vice president and the president speaks, and the NRA didn't ban guns. Uh, guns are banned, but they were banned by the Secret Service. And uh, so I just wanted to, to clear that up, because I think I went in a little bit on the NRA too, so about that, because it's like, really? You know, so there's that. Saw a video about a, a situation in Miami where police grabbed a suspect and they had him on the ground, he apparently, uh, I don't know, they were chasing him. And they finally got him, had him on the ground. And this one police officer, somebody's taping it on their phone. And this one police officer runs into the shot and kicks the man in the head like the man, is a, his head is a football. This one cop did that. And the cop, uh, the police chief already has suspended the police officer pending a further investigation. But, I mean, there is no way that you can justify. I mean, I don't know if you've seen it or not, but the man is on, is on the ground. Another officer is handcuffing him, so he's got his hands behind his back. He's laying on the ground, and this cop comes out of nowhere and kicks him like he's kicking a football, kicks him in the head. I, I, I don't see how this guy could even hold on to his job. I mean, I don't, I don't see how they'll let him keep his job. He does, first of all, he doesn't have the mentality it takes to be a police officer. This man clearly was in custody, clearly had given up. Wasn't trying to squirm away. He was laying there on the ground. You kicked his head like it was a football? What? Hey, it came out uh, yesterday that uh, Rudy Giuliani is now working for the president. And he says that President Trump repaid his lawyer, uh, Michael Cohen, the $130,000 that Michael Cohen paid to Stormy Daniels, the porn actress, to be quiet about an alleged affair. That Trump has always said never happened. Well, if it never happened, why are you paying $130,000? But Trump had also said that he never paid that money. It turns out he did. I mean, by way of paying it back, he paid it back. And that's not what he told the American people not that long ago. So there's that. And uh, Michael Cohen's phone uh, was being uh, monitored. They were monitoring the calls as to who was calling in, who was calling out. They, were not they say they were not listening to the calls. But... They say that the president did call Michael Cohen while they were monitoring the call. So they, they may have that somewhere. They may have that somewhere. Come on, man. <laughs> There's that. 
Uh, Rihanna, circling back to some entertainment news, you know, she's got the uh, Savage by Fenty uh, lingerie line that is going to be coming out. In fact, it'll be out just in time for Mother's Day, but it's going to be a subscription service. So I guess you pay a subscription fee and they'll send you a couple of pieces every month. Is that, is that how that works? I don't know. Do you subscribe to clothes? I've been, I've, I've, I've been on, uh, uh, I've been sent stuff about that, but the, but the, the clothes, the, 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 the company that's soliciting my business, those are not clothes that I would wear, uh, at this point in my life. They're tar the, the, they were targeted for people who were like in their, you know, twenties, thirties, something like that. Well, you know what? I'm not wearing skinny pants. Okay. <laughs> when I was that young, I wouldn't wear skinny pants. I'm not doing that. Come on, man. For real? No. No. No, I'm not doing that. So, anyway, well, whatever you want to comment on, uh, something that I talked about, you want to go more in depth. Now, if you do, uh, reference what what I was talking about with your comment, because I, I did quite a few stories. So, instead of just saying, yeah, that's right. Or, yeah, that's right about what? you got to let me know what it's right so that we can have a conversation about that. So, uh Desiree says, good morning. Well, I don't know where you are, but okay, good morning. <laughs> Samuel, what's up, man? Hey, Michelle. Hope everything is good. And Regina's in the house. And hello, uh, Brenda in Mississippi and everybody. Hope everything is good. Christina, uh, good to hear from you. <coughs> pardon. Evening, Jerry. <coughs> oh, pardon me. Camille, uh, Brenda says, is his wife, and his wife's going to take up for her husband. Yeah. You know what? The, the interesting thing is, is that by, by by most accounts, Bill and Camille had the last, I don't know how many years, had a marriage which, which was more about convenience than anything because they didn't really, you know, they weren't as close as they appeared to be. I'll say that by according to many reports. Uh, but still, she's old school and she's going to stand by her man. I respect that. But to him, by the way, Bill Cosby and Roman Polanski were both uh, booted out of the Motion Picture Academy. So they no longer will get a vote when it comes Oscar time. As if that's important right now to Bill Cosby, right? Uh, yeah, Donna, they always say it's never about race. Anytime they say it's never about race, it's always about race. Every time. Every time. I've never run across a situation where they said it wasn't about race and it actually was not about race. You know, because usually it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty evident <laughs> when it's about race. I mean, it really is. You have to be really... I'm not going to say naive, but you got to be really uninformed to not realize the situation is about race. I mean, really, I know people of color see it all the time. We, we see it all the time. So there's that. So uh, let's see, Regina, the cops. Yeah, that happened a while back, huh? I, th I, th I said this before. I think, pardon me, because I adjust myself. I think that uh, the police... There's been infiltration in there by by the white supremacists who have gone undetected under the radar. I really believe that. There are cops out there, and they know they can get away with it, and they're going to get away with it, and they are getting away with it. And because the guy who, like I said earlier, the guy who kicked the man in the head today, the video is out there. There's no way he has the temperament to be a cop. There's no way. How would you, why would you kick this man in the head? He's down and being handcuffed, and he's not trying to get away. Why would you kick him in the head like that? Come on. Donna, why waste time with investigations when the evidence is visible? Shameful. You know what? Yeah, you're right, but that's part of the due process that you're, that you're uh, I guess that you're allowed, and probably the police union, there's a lot of factors involved, but yeah, Donna, I agree with you. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, but a lot of, there's a lot of factors, uh, if it becomes a criminal case or has to, he's, a, he's entitled to an investigation. I'm guessing if, uh, his union, the union contract, uh, uh I guess guarantees that I'm guessing, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not that familiar with it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Tanya, can you imagine me in skinny pants? I mean, for real, can you imagine me in skinny pants? Can you imagine being anything skinny? I was overweight when I was born. I was an overweight fetus. Actually, I was I was heavy. I didn't have a neck till I was like three years old because I was like so big. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. That's, that's the truth. Donna, you're welcome. Uh, me and uh, Donna's uh, son, Miles, talked the other day, and uh, he, he's interested in learning, and uh, hopefully I can, I can uh, steer him in the right direction, and uh, he can get that uh, Chippendales career off the ground for you, Donna, help you with the bills and stuff. So that'd be nice. 
She's like, it's a shame you can't type the finger. Can you type the finger on there? I mean, you know, but you're better than that, though. You're better than that, Donna. Stop. Stop. Uh, Tanya says, I want to see what happens to Harvey Weinstein. You know what? Yeah, everybody does. But, you know, like I said before, justice is slow. You know, will his time come? Yes, it'll come. Look at Charlie Rose. What was it, 20-something more women said that uh, Charlie Rose was inappropriate with them? Half those women work for CBS. And there's documentation, apparently, allegedly, that says that the managers of CBS were told years ago how foul Charlie uh, Charlie Rose was, and they did nothing. So that makes them, as managers, makes the company, the network, puts them at risk, you know, and uh, exposes them to, to, to uh, legal relief for these women. We'll have to see how that plays itself out. Uh, he's too skinny to be a Chippendale. Well, I'm not gonna lie. Years ago, uh, I was uh, I wasn't in, I was in Chippendale because, as you can see, I'm a little heavy. I was a Chunkendale, and uh, made quite a bit of money. I got to be real honest with you. You know, my dancing name was Grape Smuggler. <laughs> Evelyn, I'm doing great. I am doing fantastic. The situation at the restaurant here. Uh, you're frustrated with these continued racial ignorance across the board. Well, you know what? Yes, I understand that. There are not a lot of restaurants, though, that are going to admit to something because that opens them up to litigation. Yes, it was a problem. Yes, yes, it was racial, and we're sorry. It was racial, and yes, we should have known. And all that, you know, but then you do that, and then now, now you open yourself up to a lawsuit. That's what I'm guessing. So that's why you have to just continue to deny everything. But they, at the beginning, they they said we got it wrong. They should have just left it at that. What does that mean? Well, take it any way you want. We got it wrong. I think you know what we mean. You know, you probably do something with that. <laughs> But they was to say it's not racial is just an insult. I'm just saying that's what that's what that's what I think. So, but uh, that's that's some of the stuff we've been talking about. If you bought some beef from Kroger, you might want to uh, Google that because there's been a, a recall of about thirty five thousand pounds of beef because it may have plastic parts in it. Uh, so you need to be aware of that. All right, uh, what else is going on here? Uh, Jason Witten retired as a Dallas Cowboy today. So that was kind of emotional for him, but it helps that he's going to have the uh, the uh, cushy ESPN gig to fall back on, so there's that. Um, well, speaking of football, Matt Ryan of the Atlanta Falcons signed a, an extension with the team, a record-breaking $150 million, uh, $30 million a year. So that's like a five-year Hundred and fifty million dollar deal, which is almost what I have to work here. I'm, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting close to that, but I get it in, in Turkish, uh, Turkish money, Tur Turkish lira. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, they're cutting Conan O'Brien's uh, uh, late night show to thirty minutes. I've tried watching that show, and I'm sure it's entertaining to most, but it's not for me. All right, uh, let's see uh, what else, what else, what else. I told you about Roman Polanski and Bill. Bill Cosby, and, uh, wow, I didn't see all these messages I got earlier. There was a lot of lightning in Dallas today. I get a message when there's a light, when there's lightning close to me. So, uh, there's that. $155 million. Yes, a lot of money. A lot of money to play football. Take them hits, though, right? Brenda asked for Kanye. No pass. Just need to watch what he says. I seen him on TMZ. That was, that was, that was pretty heated. Yeah, you know, they say he's in Wyoming right now chilling. Got to recover. You know, the, the worst thing, he kind of alluded to this, and if I, if, I, if I interpret it wrong and you saw it and you saw it differently, please, by all means, let me know. But um, to me, he kind of said, like, he doesn't really take his meds on a regular basis. Well, if you don't take it, someone, I, I take meds for clinical depression. I don't think he has what I have. I think his is a little deeper. But if I don't take my meds, I could probably go three or four days. But after that, I start feeling very sad and uh, to be to be quite honest with you have thoughts of, of harming myself so I take my meds because I've got too much to live for I mean I do I've got beautiful daughters grandsons uh, my wife who I love more than the next breath I'll take you know and so I have a lot to live for and uh, but if I don't take those meds, that that doesn't that doesn't uh, that's not as clear to me as it is as when I do take them, you know. And uh, clinical depression 
is uh, way different, I think, than what Kanye, if Kanye's, bi I've heard he's bipolar, but I'm not real, I can't remember for sure, but uh, clinical depression is, I mean, it's, it's a real thing. You know, your brain uh, manufactures this thing called serotonin, which regulates the mood, your, your mood. And for me, my brain doesn't make that chemical. So I have to take medication that'll, I guess, make that chemical to help regulate uh, my mood. So there's, there's that. And, uh, but there's a lot of people who, who, you know, they're not really regular taking their meds and you, you have to be, it's important. Otherwise you're wasting your time, you know, and you can't get mad and, 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 and upset because, you know, things ain't going right. So you're going to, by, by getting back at the world, you're going to quit taking your meds. Well, who are you harming? I've had this conversation with many people over the years in person, on the phone, through email, and texting because I've I've uh, always been very open about clinical depression with the reason being that if me being open talking about it can help someone make the decision to reach out for some help that it'll be well worth me being open about it and so I've had many conversations about that a lot of women have called me because the men the man that they love absolutely refuses to see somebody about it when it's very clear there's something going on there and I've had to I've had to I've sat in parking lots at grocery stores talking to men they have cried I have cried and uh, we got through it together, you know, and uh, hopefully uh, Kanye can like, just, you got to take your meds, man. You can't like take them and then not take them. And the thing is, is like sometimes, like when I first started taking meds for clinical depression, it took a while to get the right, the right meds. There's a lot of different ones out there and some of them left me lethargic. Some of them left me like, I'd be like this. You know, and, and so I had to get the right combination, and I finally did. It didn't take as long as it sounds, but it, it, it took a minute, and, and finally got it right, and I've been rolling ever since. So there you go. Donna Sammy, Sammy Sosa <clears throat> is, uh, yeah, well, yeah. I've, I've, well, he, you know what? He's been that way for a few years now. He, uh, I think he said that he had vitiligo, but apparently his eyes got it too, because now his, aren't his eyes blue now? <laughs> Are his eyes blue? I mean, he's paler than me. <laughs> and that's saying a lot, you know? Yeah, I've seen pictures of him. Uh, I don't I don't know. I don't know what caused him to do something like that to himself. Clearly, he bleached his skin because there are there are, there are like they're like blotches and stuff like that where like around the eyes where it didn't, you know, because you can only go so far with that stuff. I guess you can't go in the eye. You could permanently harm your eyes and stuff. So it's not it's not 100 percent. You know, and it looks like it looks like like and then not only that, but then then he like he smoothed out his hair. He got a conk. <laughs> he got a process, you know, so I don't know. Uh, let's see. I you know what? I did not see the follow up conversation between Kanye and Van Lathan. And that's who you're talking about. Is that the, are you talking about the, the reporter that called him out? respectfully and told him why you're wrong and all that no i didn't see that i need to go back and see that uh michelle uh, absolutely uh i don't there's no shame in 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 having clinical depression i'm i've never been ashamed of that it now it took me a while like i knew something that my boss uh in st louis that i had chuck atkins told me he pulled me in his office one time and he closed the door and he didn't sit on the other side of his desk. He sat next to me in the other chair. And he says, you know, I'm going to tell you something, man. He says, you have like an incredible amount of talent in this business. You know, he says, but there's something wrong. You know, and I was like, what do you mean something's wrong? What do you mean something wrong? What are you talking about? That was me, right? There's the depression, instant anger, right? He says, hold on a second. I'm not talking to you as your boss. I'm talking to you as a friend. There's something going on with you, man. You don't see it. Everybody in the building sees it. There's something, something happens. There's something going on with you, man. And we don't know what it is, but we're concerned for you, man. It's like people don't want to work with you. People are scared to be around you, man. He said, you fly off the handle. He goes, something happened. Something's going on, man. I don't know what it is. If there's a medical issue you're not aware of, or you're on drugs. I don't drug. I don't know damn drugs. He's calm down. He goes, I'm talking to you man to man. And he gave me a phone number. Uh, the company I worked for that owned the station at the time, they had the EAP, the Employee Assistance Program, where if you felt like you needed to talk to somebody professionally, 
about some issues in your life, you could call this number. They would set up an appointment and your employer would never get any information. Your employer has nothing to do with it. They have nothing to do with it. All they do is give you the number. You call the number. They set up an appointment. You go three times. And if the therapist thinks that you have something wrong, then they'll move on to something else. Right. And uh, so I went. Like if they think you have depression or something, then they'll refer you to a permanent therapist that you can see or a psychiatrist because uh, a therapist cannot prescribe medication. A psychiatrist can. And so I had both. Right. Uh, and. Uh, I think after like the. Uh, my first session. First of three. I was like, so what do you think? He goes, oh, yeah, you got a problem. <laughs> he said, he said. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to lighten it. He says, I, he goes, I diagnosed you 20 minutes after you sat down, man. You, you're, you're suffering from clinical depression. You don't even have to do the other two sessions. I'm going to, I'm going to send you to somebody. And they did. And I had them, I was given medication. And, uh, I, uh, kept the pills in the bottle for about three weeks. And, uh. My wife said, she was my girlfriend at the time, but my wife said, you've got to take these pills. She said, you've got to, you, you, I, I, she goes, I need, I need that man back. You know, I need that man back. Now, one of the side effects for like 4% of people is uh, your libido all but disappears. And I told her that and she was like, I don't care about that. I don't care about that. I want you. I want you back. I don't care about no libido, you know thought about it you know and then start taking the pills and it takes it takes a couple three weeks for it to start start working and stuff right and i felt like a cloud got lifted off of me and i remember going to work at the radio station and at that time they would they would do employee evaluations and my turn came up uh about i don't know two months later and the same guy who sat me in his office he says we don't know whether you need to take a DNA test or something. He goes, because you're not the same person you were like a month ago. He goes, and that's a great thing. He says, nothing, nothing is going to stop you now, man. Nothing. He goes, you stay on the path that you're on. Nothing can stop you. He goes, welcome back. And, uh, that was, uh, that was special. Never forgot that. So uh, I say that to say that the you know, mental health is for real. And uh, if you know somebody who who needs to talk to somebody uh, or, or encourage them to do so, there's no, just there's no shame in that at all. There's no shame. You know, uh, I just think that that especially in, in communities of color, it's a taboo subject. You know, oh, he's touched. He ain't touched. There's something wrong that can be fixed. Let's fix it. You know, but. Uh, we got to do better with that. There are too many important people who are losing the battle of mental health when they don't have to because they're being stubborn, especially men. Men see it as a weakness. It's not a weakness. It's a weakness to not do anything about it. That's weak. When there are so many people who love you and are counting on you to, uh, to be good, to be at your best, to be on your A game. You know, now there are days that I have down days. I have dark days still, even on meds. I, I have a, I'll have a dark day, you know, and those days I usually stay home, you know, and, uh, and, and I always figure it out and it, I don't get a dark day because I haven't taken my meds. I get a dark day because I just get a dark day. My lows are lower than yours. You know, some days you're having a bad day. Well, my, mine are your days are you're having a bad day. I'm having a crappy day, right? You're having a crappy day. I'm having like a day from hell. <laughs> you know, mine are, are a little lower than yours, but uh, it is what it is. So, and yeah, Michelle, you know what? Thank you, Chuck. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Chuck Atkins is 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 a friend of mine, and and uh, to this day, and will always be a friend of mine. So that's the deal on that. So anyway, I gotta go. I gotta go because I gotta go on the air. I gotta finish up the show and get everything packed away because Sean Andre's coming up next. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. If you can follow me on. All my social media platforms at Tony Scott Media, except for what? YouTube. You go to a This and That Media on YouTube. Just this, youtube.com slash this, this and that media. And uh, just subscribe to my channel. It'll, it'll, uh, it helps me more than you actually realize. It doesn't cost you anything. 
And uh, if you want to like check the bell off to be notified when I put a video up, you're more than welcome to do that. Not required. I'm just saying, you know, if you could just subscribe, share this video on your uh, on uh, on uh, your your pages, that'd be great too, Michelle. That's a that's a great point, Michelle. That meds don't fix down days; they help you deal with down days. That's exact. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. I get fewer. I've, I've had fewer down days as my journey. Uh, to get to know God has gotten better. I also add that in there too. So, uh, I better jump on Facebook when I start feeling dark. You'll bring me back to the light, Donna. You're so nice. I can't wait to meet you and Miles. That's that's. Uh, I think I think I had a great talk with him. Uh, he's just he's gonna he's gonna do some special things. So I'll just say that. But have a great night, Yvonne. Take care, uh, Donna, uh, Riri, uh, Brenda, everybody, Michelle. I'll uh, hopefully uh, talk to you tomorrow. Not guaranteed, but uh, hopefully uh, I will. All right, take care.